Hello, everybody. Hello, friends. It's me, Cynthia. And Azalea. And we're, we're Green Girl Studios. We're never going to get that. <laughs> it's we're, I'm going to be waiting, and then it's never going to happen. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll try. So we have a new laptop. I have to figure out where the camera is on it. Right up front and oh. center. Oh, I see. Okay. It's different for us, so we're pretty happy. This is Azalea's phone. So today we have two cameras going. So we're going to be able to, and we're going to be able to, to zoom in tight so you can see what we have. So that's pretty exciting for us. Anyway, we have some caps to show you guys. We have some bead, wheat, bead embroidery that Azalea is going to show you how to use these caps that she learned last year at Bead Fest from our neighbor, Joanne. Was it Joanne? Joanna. Joanna, that's what it was. Oh, Lisa says it's such a pleasure to Magical see your beauty faces. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you, Kalite. We're, we're doing something different. We're doing a little bit different. So, oh, hello, Jermaine. Hello. Our friends, our friends. We have some fun things to show you. So, we're going to have some fun on Sunday. We went to the leather shop today at, um, what's that called? Jackson's. Jackson's. Jackson's Saddle and Boot Shop or whatever here in Asheville. Oh, hello, Merle. We have a we have a saddle place in town that sells a bunch of leather and boots and things. Is all you got new boots? I guess you can't show your boots unless I we took do them off full. earlier. I took them off a few minutes ago because we walked like a mile today yeah. in the woods, and I was yes. wearing those boots. My feet have been kind of hurting a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. Well, you're breaking in new boots. It's natural. Hello, Kitty. It's a cute name. So it was pretty fun. We went there and um, we opened up a new craft that I had forgotten about. I don't know if you guys know this, but in my youth time, I was a part of a thing called the SCA or the Society for Creative Anachronism. And I did that when I was probably Azalea's age. And it was pretty fun. I learned how to fence. What else did I learn? I learned leather crafting. I learned... I learned some basic weaving there. It was like, you know, you learn medieval type crafting and it was a lot of, uh, you know, I learned leather carving, which was exciting for me at the time. You know, any craft at that point I was into it. I, I think I, you know, my friend star says, she goes, I haven't met a craft I didn't like except cross stitch. And that's when we became like BFF forever. I mean, it was like, it was on. That's cute. Because then, you know, I'm the same way. I like cross stitch because, it, you know, it's kind of like counting and like really meticulous. To me, that's like, I don't know. It's not as fun. It's like, I don't want to say it's like paint by number, but sometimes it is where you have to match the thread to the square and it's already like colored in for you. That just seems like, but I could see how it could be, you know, satisfying, you know. I don't even know. Like, I don't think I've ever done that. Well, I haven't done it in a long time. It just doesn't look as good, too, because it's on that plastic. Now, I have seen cross-stitch look pretty incredible. Greg's dad made some really amazing cross-stitch, but it was, like, really fine, tiny, tiny little embroidered X's. It was really cool. That was diplomatic, Cynthia. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so anyway, we, um, we went to the leather store, and I bought. Well, this is the first thing I got. I don't know why I put it here. But look at this is this is um buffalo isn't that weird it's kind of cool buffalo leather anyway i'm gonna make some moccasins or those kind of shoes that you can you know like medieval fair shoes you guys have seen them i mean at this point those pointy shoes, no they're not gonna be pointy, pointy. pointy ones they're gonna be uh round toe i don't want anything that's gonna cut off my chi you know how you guys the i know chi, how that sensitive, sensitive chi, chi that is always like the oh, most sensitive. sensitive chi well your chi is your energy you know and i don't like anything to be constricting even though i have a belt on today azalea made this belt chi. for me cute it's tie. just a strip of knit it's pretty cute but anyway when your, when your foot. foot molds to the leather. Yeah, it's kind of like that. But, you know, they have those shoes. I wanted a pair for, like, I don't know. But they're usually, when we've gone to the run fair, I'd look at them. They're sewn beautifully. And uh, let's just do that. 
get a pattern and make some. They're kind of hard. You know, it's kind of hard to find patterns with that type of boot. I saw one. I want to take a class in town, but it's 500 bucks. And I was just like, what? Let's just Although get on cool. Craftsy. Yeah, I don't think there's on Craftsy. Might be. I think I can figure it out because I, you know, I can deconstruct a pair of boots and figure it out. It doesn't, it don't look that difficult. I mean, we have, we can, I can sew. I got leather tools. I'm like, how hard can it be? You know? I mean, I say that now. We'll find out. I know how to sew leather and burnish leather, and I know how to cut out a pattern piece, so it can't be that hard. Yeah, it's not. But you know what? This leather is so thick and so supple. It's really beautiful. I love it. And then we got to show that we got some big vegetable thing. tan today. Have you guys ever heard of this? We're going to do, I told the I said, I know what we're doing on Sunday because it's going back to my youth time with leather carving, and that's going to be on Sunday. I'm going to make something. So there's three or four different kinds of thicknesses, and this is called vegetable tan, and this is really malleable. I have some masks that I bought yeah, at the Rank Fair. Like, I don't even know how, before I was born. And, um, they're made in the same way. You can mold it and shape it with water and in a mold. So you can really get in there and shape it and carve it. And you can do some amazing things. We we're at the uh, Highland Craft Guild a few days ago and checking it out and seeing if it was our vibe, if we could do the show or not. We've been, people have told us to do it. You know, they're like, oh, you know. Azalea thinks there wasn't a lot of people, but I've heard from other folks crowd, that yeah. it's like you have people have a lot of moolah going into that show. You you know, there'll, be, there'll be a cup, like a hand carved, beautiful porcelain cup carved in scraffito. And that thing is like the $700. Average, the the average price was like, of everything in there. I looked at like, the prices of things. The average price for that show was $400. It's, an, it's not. I mean, average. Kind of, there, well, there were some things that weren't quite. That yeah, but if you look at the majority and you divide by how much, that's how you find the average of the mean. That's how you find it in math class. If you add up the every bits and you divide by how many you average is four hundred. Well, there that's was, most yeah, of the lot. prize. That I saw. And then it kept going up. So, so she saw a lot of leather work, and she was like, "I am seeing." We saw several leather crafting boots, and I was like, "You know, I have a background in, in you know." carving and sewing leather. I mean, I don't, you know, I never did it professionally, of course, but I made belts and purses and things when I was in my um, early teens before I went to art school. And, uh, you know, I painted it. I made masks. It was fun, but it's kind of an expensive hobby. It got to be expensive. It didn't used to be, but now, I mean, just that thing of leather was like 60 bucks. So we're like, well, you know, if you're going to make a bunch of small things, Anyway, that's what we have on the plan for Sunday night. If you guys want to tune in for that, it'll be fun. We'll make we'll make something. I'm going to make some samples over the next couple of days, and we'll see what happens. Oh, and I have a live with Sam's Bead. Do you guys know Sam Siegel? And you know his sister Rachel? Well, they have uh, a live for Friday at 6 on, you know, Eastern time. So we're going to do a kit. And I have a, one of our pieces as the focal, and we're going to work with that on Friday. If you guys aren't doing anything and you want to see what's what, maybe um, get your beads out and we can craft together. So there's a couple of fun events to get your creative juices, you know. I've always kind of hated that phrase, juices. get your creative juices. We're going to start doing the demo. Yeah. All right. As I was like, let's oh, get on with it. This person says, just wondering if you're showing my name. Yes. I Helen. see your name, Helene. Helene Jewel. Helene? That's a pretty name. I said oh. Helen. That's because it's a little <sighs> bit special. Okay. Oh, Kathy says, hi, Cynthia and Azalea. I so enjoyed your TGBE show. So fantastic. Love your nodding technique. Need to watch the replay on it. You know, um, I want to do a video and do a couple of nodding because, you know, I avoided knots for years because I knotted pearls and it was always gappy and not good. And I tried that tool. You know, that everybody's like, oh, go get yourself a knotting tool. And it's like that kind of like it's like a prong thing that you have to knot and pull. And um, my my silk still stretched. So I didn't love it. So I switched to Ceylon and I showed on that demo a couple different ways to knot. And that's just, you know, that's some of it. There's a couple of other fun techniques that 
I'll do a video and just make, we, and with this new computer, get this. I didn't know this was even possible, but with this new computer, we can go back and we can film something with all of our mistakes that we'll make during, you know, a session and then we can edit it, which yeah, we, we couldn't do that before. So it'll be really fun to get I'm that. in love with this computer so far. Azalea is like, when we, I've when been we went to Best to Buy, we were like, there's so many kinds of computers. And we, I was just like, I just want one that I can do this thing on. I want to be able to zoom because we were trying to zoom before. We tried magnifying glasses. Yeah, look at this. This is why we bought this computer right here. All right, Azalea's going to show, gonna show it. I'm going to demo this right now. So we, we switch, switch the camo. Switch to the camera. And this is why. So we can switch the cameras back and forth without having to show y'all. This is my this is what my demo is gonna be. Mom, we should switch. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm moving okay, over. Okay, we're switching spots, you guys. I don't know why my phone keeps trying to fade out. What is that about, yo? I don't know. That is so extremely goofy. It's trying to do like it's like power saving mode, trying to turn off every time I close my eyes. Okay, so I'm doing the demo this time, y'all. And um, you know, how can I look at the um, forgive comments. my go back we to, have to go back so to see it. We have to go back to StreamYard real quick. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, wish this thing. Would oh, stop Bonnie says this, I'm but... loving your post about your crochet necklaces. Thanks, Bonnie. I'm making no a. Zoe and I are working that. on a really fun workshop that I taught this workshop a few times over the last. Well, since not since pandemic times because that's you know we didn't have any live action classes but um i'm going to show how to do how i dye everything and how i finish it'll have the full meal deal so that's coming soon we're working on it now look how this thing it's keeps... pretty involved okay oh how do you feel about it it's probably just trying to focus it's, on your my fingers. phone keeps trying to turn off i mean i guess this is fine it says it's trying to save power but it's still on so i guess it's all right all right, you guys, um, I'm going to just have to accept the fact that my phone screen is black, but it's like, oh, it's still recording. You're fine. I don't like I don't feel comfortable with that, but I guess I'm going to have to get used to it. So don't mind my crusty little nails. Every single time I know that I'd have my my hands on screen, I'm like, I'm going to do my nails. And then it looks like this, which is not as <laughs> it, it could let me do your nails next time. It's not the nail polish quality. It's that I always do it when I have to work. No, I'm not impatient. And I also have to work. I had no, things to do. To I had to help still. you prep for this live. Still have to be still. All right. Me. I don't want to hear about this nail okay, polish okay, critique. Okay. Well, then let's, All um, right. So today we're doing this, some cabochon embroidery. Yeah, this one is kind of. That's kind a of glass curved. cab from our friend made by, what's her business called? It's, Why would I remember that? I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. Dial so, down the sash. All right. Well, this is glued to this piece of interfacing. I can't remember what this is called, but it's it's pretty stiff. Um, it's glued down, and all I did so far was stitch just one bead after another around this, just into the interfacing. I didn't do any bead work. I just strung one up and then just stitched it down. And then I kind of went back and then stitched. It was like a, it was a bead back stitch. Here's what the other side looks like. Oh, back stitch. Yeah. So this is going to turn into peyote. And right now, right now, I stuck my needle out of the top, and I stuck it out of this hole right here, out of out of a bead. So it's sticking out of a bead right now. So what we're going to do is, if for anybody that knows peyote, you know what's about to happen. But um, for anybody that does not do bead work, this is called a peyote stitch around a capuchon. So you're basically making a setting. And when we're done doing the beading that's wrapping around the, 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 the cabochon, we can do whatever decorative bits we want around here. And then we trim off the excess white. So then all you see is your beadwork. So I'm going to, I'm sticking out of a hole now. I'm going to get up a bead. These are kind of hard to string up. So you have to like focus on one and then go get it. And then I'm going to, this is the one I came out of. I'm going to skip this one. Let me get close. You know what? Oh, we got this zoom camera. for a reason, yo. <laughs> Mm. All right, y'all, give me just a second. got to zoom in. I think that looks pretty good right there. This is good. It's... All right, people can see that, I think. Mm -hmm. Just keep so your hands braced. So I'm going to skip this bead and go into this one with my needle. I'm using a size 10 needle, and I believe the hole on these beads was a size, what, 11 maybe? So there's that first one. See so yeah, I skipped this one, so I'm going to scoot this up. And this is how it's going to look for when you start. This is going to want to stick out. What you want to happen is you want to just keep doing your rows 
and as you pull your tension, these beads are going to start gripping up your cabochon and holding it in place. So now we're out of this one. We're going to dig another bead. It looks good. String this up. Skip this one. Go through the next bead. Coming out. That hole is nice and wide. And then we pull this. Make sure that it's see. Yeah, so I always had some trouble so with it. Oh, I see how. I'm. Oh, super clear. Perfect. Thank you, Vicky. All right, now we're going to just continue like that. And my hands are a little sweaty, and I'm trying to keep my hands braced. So this, I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't know if we're going to watch me do this the whole time, or maybe Mom can take over showing something else while I finish around. But this is what this looks like so far. Hmm. So since I got a little bit of tooth gap action happening with my base row beads when I was stitching it down, there's a little bit of a gap here. And here, basically in between each bead, that's why you can see this thread here is because I did not put them all perfectly close together. But I also haven't done this in a long time, so... Mm. It's all right. Nobody will know about it except me and y'all. All right. So, let's try oh, another one. Kylisha is here with us, joining us. I think, Sylvie, that they are size 11. I didn't see the tube, but I believe that is. Oh, Cindy says, hello, Cynthia and Zoe. You guys look great on your new computer. Really good close-up. Looking forward to a new beating class. Yeah, we have several classes lined up. I have one on... Uh, that I've been working on for a while that has, uh, that's about my wire wing, like a more elaborate wire wing. And that should be pretty fun. Uh, you can do peyote stitch with like any size of bead. It doesn't really matter. You can do it with anything. You just have to, um, I think the trick is when you're doing your base row, it should be an even number of mm. beads. So right now, See, that gap is causing me a little bit of problem. It's making it where my beads want to shift a little bit. But yeah. as we keep going, that It'll will kind of that'll out. straighten out. But this first row is always going to be a little bit jankety. You can always use different size beads, I think, to get. I saw uh, a project that had big beads on the bottom row and then small beads going up. I saw a beadaholic project like that just today. Oh, beadaholic. Is that what it was? Beat Holic or Beat Holic? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Probably uh, Holic because, you know, I guess nobody wants to be a Beat Holic, but. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people in on this. On, they would rather be a right Beat Holic than. Beat Holic? That sounds like alcoholic, but, <laughs> but just a beads. little less, you know. Yeah. All right. So. This is just what you got to do. You got to go around in circles. Now, this first part is probably the hardest part to go through this first level of beads because they're all flush next to each other for the most part. But when you go through your next rows, you have these gaps already given, and then it's just easy to just slide them in there. Mm. And it's the most satisfying thing pretty much ever. I have a peyote bracelet project that I started for Kate. For oh, you can't show it I can't show it, but I can talk about it, I think. Yeah, you can it's talk one that about we already we already showed it actually in her live in Fresno. We already showed it off and talked about it and pretty much exhausted oh, that we? topic. No, I don't remember. Maybe. I kind of remember talking about it. We talked. We didn't show it, but we talked about it. I'd love it if I could go super fast. I'm I almost know. to the end. I'd yeah. luckily, oh, hi, our friend Clem's on. Hi, Clem. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? I know All it's weird friends. for us. We're midweek. We're Wednesday. feels like I'm like, oh, didn't we just do this? And it's like, yeah. Did, oh, actually. Ruth Ann says she must re-watch this. So excited to learn this. Thank you. All right. I'm not the best teacher because I'm moving kind of fast and my hands are kind of sweaty. But basically what I've done for anybody that's new in here is I we glued this, this oh, we glued the cabochon down to this interfacing. But it doesn't really matter. I was going to originally do it on just regular felt. Um, but this is nice and stiff, so it makes it a little bit easier to work with, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, then right down here. I stitched a row of beads just right next to each other. It's called a bead backstitch. And um, I did not do that part in the beginning of this video. I just showed up with that already done. But there's like a quick like five minute tutorial on YouTube that I looked at that you guys can also look like look at. But it's just a backstitch that you do with beads. And now we're peyote stitching with the beads. Luann asked, what glue did you use? Um, super glue or um, E6000 works great. Anything nice and strong. All right. Oh, we're, gonna, mm. we're going through. We're coming yeah, out of you don't this want hole right now. That will, uh, Luckily, break down. This, these are brown beads with white threads, so you can kind of see where I am. We're coming out of this bead. We're going to skip this one and go into the hole of the next one. If I can get in there. 
And since there's a little bit of gap, they're sticking up a little bit, but that's all right. It'll probably we saw we'll some fantastic right bead work at that show, didn't we? Oh, uh, which one? The Highland Show, the Highland Craft Guild. Someone told me they're like, oh, if you get into that show, you're like, you're in it. And I was yeah. like, well, but I think it's pretty expensive to do. I don't think it's worth it for us. That's not our crowd. That's my that's my judgment so far. Our crowd is big crafty people, and mm -hmm. wherever the big crafty goes. Um, we should probably look at what they're doing too because that's our crowd. That's where we do our best. All right, so we've just finished that row. That was nice and quick, relatively. Mm -hmm. Make sure everything's all tight. You want to keep it tight, but not too tight. I mean, I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter. So this. That looks good, what you did. See Very this? Tucson vibes. I know. That's what I was going to say too. Like cerulean mm. blue and like a bronze color gives me vibes of the West. And I cannot wait to go back out to Tucson. Mm. All right, so we're coming out of this bottom row bead right here. And instead of going on with that, we're going to go through this bead. This is the first one that we did on this row. We're going to go through that top bead right there. I don't know if y'all can see that. We're going to go through this one. So now we're working out of the second row. We're going to want to keep make sure that we're kind of pulled tight. But this is going to start to warp around the bead. It's going to start wrapping it up the more rows we do. And you can, bezel. you can go, you can do like three or four rows. So then a bezel comes and stops here. Or you can do a bunch of rows. So then it's like tight but then you can't really see the stone. So I don't do that. So now- It's secure because you're you, it's glued down. I like E6000 because there's a tiny bit of flex. So if you use a glue that's uh, real brittle, sometimes over time that glue can harden and not flex and it might, you know, if it gets dinged or whatever, if you make a bracelet, it can uh, loosen up. So I, love e6000 and i love fabrotac that one is really good bonnie says you need that van azalea we saw right. westphalia today and it looked she was like i see it i was thrilled yeah mm -hmm. it was pretty so cute. this next part that we're doing is we are just doing what that first that first step that i showed y'all but with the second row of beads and now it's easy because you don't have to dig your needle in there it's just oh it's already raised there's a up. space so there's, there's a space intended for it right here so you just string up a bead like we did. And then you just go through that next one. You just slide it in there and then it's perfect. And, and um, it fills that uh, it fills that gap for the most part. But mm -hmm. since these were kind of far apart, that's why this looks like that is a gap in peyote will affect you your entire project. So the better your frame is at the very beginning, the better your project's going to hold together. So if you skip beads or you kind of, you know, yeah, if you skip beads or you leave a gap, it's going to affect you forever. There's going to mm. be a gap when we're done, for sure. But Clem says it's it like building a little snowball fort. Yeah, kind of. I know, yeah. like those little igloos. That's mm -hmm. what that looks like. I know. Stacking it up. You could make that in beads, make a little tiny igloo on this. So that's sliding around. We're just going to go through each one, and we're going to just do this this row here. I'm going to show you all kind of how fast I can do it, because I've got other projects that i got to – I've been procrastinating a little bit. Oops. Sorry. Oh, Julia says, I want the new corn corn pendant. That's funny. That corn, you know what? My friend Jess commissioned me to do that for the Minnesota State Fair. That's where that's going. I got a bunch of messages from people about that, more than I was expecting. I was like, I didn't know y'all were going to be so into that corn. <laughs> I know. Because there's like three separate people that well, were like, where's the yeah. corn pendant on your website? I'm like, oh, that's a custom oh, and piece it's not that um, made for It's Jess. not done yet. So it's still being made. Oh, yes, Sharon, these are square seed beads. These are. I yeah. thought that they would look good. Yeah, they do. Picked them out, actually, because I, I was fighting out. for my life trying to find <laughs> trying to find one that were ones that were laying together. Because sometimes, you all know, with seed beads, they can be all like, sometimes they'll be rounded, but they'll have kind of a flatness about them. And then sometimes they'll be completely plump and then they don't lie together right with the flat ones and i was trying to do a multicolored action and it just wasn't looking right so mom was like okay just use these because these are big and they're square and they do look good i'm glad she picked them because mm. i was having a hard time with mine for real mm -hmm. and Teresa says it looks great azalea thank you if i uh when i finish this i can make a little like throat pendant for mm -hmm. it It'd be kind of cool like a it would look like one of those special ties mm. A special tie you mean like a bolo maybe you got I don't know western what everyone wear on the brain correct i don't know the names of everything i mm. just got that's my flavor right now 
I've been, Zillian's going to, been watching uh, Longmire. I suggested with Longmire that. Longmire a little bit. Who I, isn't? I, uh, I, <laughs> That's an old show I've taken, now. I've, I've taken a break because I didn't want to be sad when it's over because I'm on the I'm on the second to last season. I'm like almost done with season five, and there's six seasons. Oh, I didn't realize they had so many seasons. Yeah. Oh, Sharon says, um, or no, Sylvia says, is the lovely creek where you photo many of your pieces close to you? Walking distance, it's so peaceful. Sylvia, that creek okay, now we is can off jump the up. Blue Ridge Parkway. We're jumping um, up I'll onto uh, make a note of the this mile marker. And if you're close by, you can get on there. It's a really good, good path. I go on it pretty much every day. I go and check. Because you know what? There are salamanders that live there, and I like to look at them and visit them. They're pretty sweet and small. All right, we're on a new row now. We just mm. jumped up. That's all we Sandra had to do is go through a new. I, I actually have... love the books because yeah. George Whittall reads it, and he's pretty much my all-time favorite audio actor. So he's amazing. Yeah, Western stuff has been my flavor for a little while now. Just Vicky while. says they actually look like little stones. Yeah, they kind of do. So oh, Sylvia says she wished she was close, but then you're in Northern California. Well, Northern California is uh, really gorgeous, really beautiful. I haven't been out that way in many, many years. It's probably been since. Well, I can't think of the last time I was in that area. Usually I'm in like the central or like Southern California when we go out to visit. It's kind of hard to get up to the north part. We used to do a show near, well, we used to go all the way up to like Seattle and Portland, but those shows are, well, they're just not there anymore, you know? So, sorry. So, yeah. so far we're building up these rows. It looks and good. That's yeah, that's how it's gonna be looking. And it's gonna go and you wanna go up at least you wanna up, hug it. You wanna hug it up to at least here where it's not big enough where this could pop out in case the glue that you use might not hold very well, because that's happened to me before where it just popped out. Right. So you wanna make it where those beads are tight enough and at the top enough. You wanna so you wanna not like, pop out. If you if anybody here has like metal smith uh background, you know when you have a bezel, you need to get at that rise just so the bead can't wiggle out or the cabochon won't wiggle out yeah oh carrie says i binged watched longmire me too i have a huge crush on henry standing bear for real just on lou diamond phillips in general he's just <laughs> ah the pride of the philippines i love him i love him in longmire i love him in young guns especially in young guns bro you know i'm not that, even gonna try to pretend it's funny because that type of of uh, Filipino look can pass for Native American. He is Native or... American and Pinoy. He's oh, a blend he's of both. both. I yeah, I think it's on his Wikipedia page. So oh, I don't know cool. how true that is. Yeah, it, it says matter. that he is indigenous and Pinoy. Wonderful. I know. I was like, that's. Oh, that's Felicia funny. says we had a meteorite fall crash in Pennsylvania two days ago. That's pretty insane. I'll have to see where that went. It sounds pretty neat. And I wonder if it made, you know, like you get uh, when there's a meteorite in Libya, you get Libya desert glass. And I think, where is the one from? Oh, Moldavite oh, is that. You get, I think it's Moldavia. And that has that beautiful green meteor glass. Uh, Ruth asks, when the peyote stitch is finished, will you show us next steps? The next step after you do the peyote stitch that I was just planning on doing, I was like, uh, you know, when I'm done hugging it at all the way at the top, I was just going to trim this out. Do you because, go around, um, do you do any of the, uh, like, you know how sometimes with embroidery, you can uh, weave or in like People probably starting to get bored watching me do the same thing over and over again. I get oh, it. Oh, no, no, it's not boring. Alicia says, my mom heard it and it said it was loud explosion around 2 a.m. in the morning. That's crazy. I would not want to hear that. I think that would stress me out. We did hear a huge crash, but you know what it was? A tree fell, and it was not even the whole tree. It was just one of the, the branches like, around our neighborhood. We live in a neighborhood called The Woods, and it is, well, it's really uh, wooded, <laughs> like big old trees, so... Right. Oh, on. Helene says, isn't Moldavite from Ukraine only? 
you know, I'm not 100% sure where it's from. I thought it was some, it got its name from being like Moldavia or something. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, that's something I'm going to have to look up. But I know that it is in one part of the world only that has that, that green look. Like, you know, it's, it's very distinctive. I actually one time burned out a piece of Moldavite and a piece of PMC. You know how you can do that in the kiln with PMC? Uh, and it made, it melted. I knew it would because it's basically, you know, it's, you know, it's just silica or glass. So it melted and made this really pretty color that looked like peridot. I'll go dig it up and show you guys. It was neat. Sherry says, I saw Lou Diamond Phillips in a restaurant in Chatsworth and he was quiet and cool. Lost Taurus. He seems like he's just in general like quiet mm, and cool. My favorite. He was in La Bamba. I think he was the lead in La Bamba. Yeah, he very cute. In that oh, too. Clem, yeah. it, you know what? Today it was like, what would you say? Like 87. And we were really... The computer said 90 when we got home. Oh, 90? Well, we're in the house now and it's not too bad. Although we have, we don't have like crow lights. We just have, we just have like an octopus lamp from Target. And these bulbs are actually making it warm. So our next thing we want to get are those really cool um photo lights so that's our next upgrade and i think we're going to get a mic that's the next thing too we're upgrade mom has got the fever now for upgrade because with the technology she's like i like how that looks i like how well, good that works i want to be you know i want to have the same level as like our like kate is so professional when we went to her thing it's like ready set go she just had like all of it is set up and she just has to walk in front of it and so like lights all ready. She doesn't have to adjust anything. And I like that, you know, it makes it where if you're going to, if you're going to do it all the time, you know, you can actually, you don't have to scramble around every time, which like, is what we usually have to do. Unless we start prepping at like noon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are we can prep at noon. Rambling by the time we are scrambling up until the time that it is time to go on. Mm hmm. But we are working on it. We got a new, we upgraded. I mean, we, we started out real small and humble where it was just one phone going live on Facebook only. Mm -hmm. And then we slowly discovered StreamYard. And then we figured out how to use camo. And we got a new computer and everything else. And it's like, you know what? That's great. We'll how upgrading. long would you say your, your thread that you cut was, Azalea? When you cut oh, that initial piece? Maybe. I'm, I do need to start weaving back in soon. Because I've got this this much left. I can't show that on camera. It's like Oh this. sure yeah, I didn't see Kate. I usually watch her replays if I can't catch it in the in the live. This is how it's looking so far. It's starting to hug. I think maybe one or two more rows should be good for it. Yeah. I, I like how it looks. Great. I was gonna do multicolor, but it didn't happen. I like that. It's multicolor enough. Now do you go so in my crochet, sometimes when I get towards the last of it, um I'll go in and out to secure it. Do you ever do that? When like, you weave the thread back like in here. back in yeah, just to just like, how you go. Oh, I didn't know if you did that or not. Uh -huh. Yeah, Robin, Lou Diamond Phillips was in Longmire. We were talking about that a minute ago and how, was, uh, how I'm a little obsessed with it. And I've been watching it like crazy. I think I got one more bead to go in here. And then I'm going to start weaving mm -hmm. back in. So we're going to put that in. And now we have finished that row. That's one, mm, two, like, three, four, maybe three or four. I kind of don't know. I don't know how to count my rows. So do you have to, do you tighten? Um, I've just been pulling while I'm going. Can I feel it? I don't feel it. She's feeling it. So there's a tiny bit, like these have a little bit of um, play. They kind of turn a little bit, but it feels yeah. pretty tight. Yeah, it's a little, this part feels nice and sturdy and like nice brick, but um, that's any sort of gapping is due to the gaps I left at the beginning. That's what, oh, that, that's what I happens see. with that. So you're saying your foundation row has to be like, it sets the tone for the rest of the uh, piece. Correct. You have to, that's Moving why. A little tight, there you go. I'm just now, I'm just starting to go back backwards. What I'm doing is I didn't go directly backwards in that row. I just started weaving back, like down. And, and what then kind I'm of thread go. is it? This I got from Kate. 
this is beading thread. I don't know. It's I don't know specifically anything about the. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't know specifically anything about this other than it's nylon. But Kate sent this to me. It's mm. this kind of light bluish gray. I'm using a. Oop, oop, that's gonna spill out. I'm using size ten beading needles, and this was my little. Oop, oh, there you go. This is my little tube of beads. This just has the price on it. Doesn't have anything else, any other information. So I'm not entirely sure what size or what kind of bead that is. But this is all I'm using right now. Are these things? This thread. You guys want oh, me to show this people little browser about that glue? This is one of. The, is that the glue you used? Uh, super glue works. Super glue or E6000. But super glue works real good for a lot of things. Gorilla mm. glue. Whatever. Yeah, gorilla. I haven't tried that one. That looks good. And then I had these from Kate. These are useful and fun. So pretty much all that stuff, you guys, you can get at beadshop.com. Correct. That's where all this, this is where my whole kit came from, except for the bead. And that and came the, from our friend. She was our neighbor at uh, Bead Fest. Yeah, my friend. Joanna. Oh, yeah, that does say KO. It yeah, is KO. KO is nylon. Yeah. Oh, Nancy Birdsong says, I'm so smitten with bead embroidery. I just finished some killer ear bobs. Go Azalea. Thanks. Sylvia just, says you, uh, that is nice. You make it look easy. I may have to try it. Um. Well, you'll be delighted with what we have to show you guys next after the tutorial because it mm. is easy. All you have to do is make sure that you don't have a whole lot of gaps when you're setting your foundation because once you set your foundation, everything else should go fast and easy because peyote leaves the gaps for you. See that? Mm -hmm. It show, and You're see. basically told where to go and you just keep going and you keep your right tension. And it is pretty easy. You just have to have that. The hardest part is that foundation and making it good. Because if you look at my foundation, I've had gaps. I had some mm. gaps, and that's causing these gaps now. Because the beads are not going to just meld together as you go through your rows. There's still a gap, and it's going to remain. So it doesn't look too. It doesn't look too terrible. I mean, you can see all this, but mm. it's it's okay because I haven't done this in like a year mm. since I Nancy did a says bead reduce here. down to a. A 15-0, and it'll secure. Yeah, that sounds pretty. I like it when I see beadwork that has multi-sized beads. I personally am not really sure how you do that, but um, I guess you just you just, you just switch. start using other beads. Yeah, exactly. I, oh, so it would just fill in as you go. Yeah, it looks good. Something like that, for real. So now, now how I'm does just, it feel? Does it feel secure? Uh, yeah, it feels. I'm weaving through now. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going through and just randomly sticking my needle back and forth, up and down in different places. Now, and Zoe, we have a question. See, she, Judy says, "I missed the beginning of the of the video. What is the white background?" This I can't remember what it's called. It has a, a lady's name in the title, but you can use. Looks you can like use felt. regular felt, or this is a type of interfacing. If you feel the bottom of it, it's got a weird texture. It probably has some sort of glue on it. Yeah, it feels thick but and stiff. The best thing, I think, since this is nice and stiff, this is good for a beginner, I was going to use just regular floppy felt because I don't really need this stiffness that much because it's nice and it's real thick, and putting in my foundation row is a little harder because oh, pushing Lisa through says, it. Oh, Lisa says fusible interfacing. Yeah, interfacing. Something lace. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. But, um, you know, our friend uh, Kinga, you guys might know Kinga. She does incredible. Oh, Nancy says Lacey's Stiff Stuff. That's the name of it. Yeah, that's, that's I it. knew it was a lady's name in it, for real. Yeah, I couldn't think of it. Thanks, Nancy. Um, our friend Kinga, you guys know she's like expert level at bead embroidery, and she does incredible. I'm going to go get the bracelet she made for me real fast. All right, so basically what we're doing now is I am just, see there the, the, those gaps again. They make an impact later on. That's why that is like this. But it's okay because only I'm going to have this. Oops, sorry. Knocked it again. So I think that should be enough. I just wove back into my project like a bunch. So if I were to snip this thread now, well, that will get tucked in automatically when we start weaving this back in. But this is what this looks like now. Is I could have gone back down into the thing and gone back over here and tied it off with this tail, but I didn't think of it until just now. This just got woven in, and now it's you feel this top row. It's not going anywhere now. It's in it's in tight place place in there. So now we can uh, we can weave back in here with a new color if we wanted to, or we can continue on. I only wove it back in because I was getting kind of anxious with how short my thread was. But normally this I would not consider this done because you can still 
pop that out if this wasn't glued. And that's the whole goal is to weave around it enough and tight enough. So you, even if, the, if this was not glued, it would not pop out. So this is, oh, Kalite, Kalite Asa, there's stiff felt in the craft section at Michael's. Yeah, that works good too. That'd be cheaper than this. Mom wants to display her bracelet. Now this Kinga made this for me as a present. And um, this has some bead embroidery. She put in like, uh, there's velvet, there's silk, there's leather. There's two kinds of leather, like two different colors. The inside is silver. I'll take it off so you can see. This bracelet is from Paris. I bought that at a boutique when I was there shopping around having fun. Oh, I'm not having even in the fun. Not even in the frame. So this is bead embroidery too. See, she did the same thing. If you guys look in at the top, actually, um, square seed beads too, right in there. That little, that little tiny one. Yeah, that's epic. Mm -hmm. And then around the eyes. And um, I didn't notice it until actually with this uh, zoom, I couldn't see it before. I thought that this was a, a button that was glued on there, but it's actually, she went around the, all the way around each one. So I didn't see that. I think these are from Anna Bronze, you guys. But um, yeah, and then she went around the edge of this that looks like seed beads. And that's what the inside looks like. Two different colors, beautifully made. Leather and velvet. Hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, that's gorgeous. amazing. And yeah. that looks nice and silky. Mm -hmm. It is. It's silk. It's a beautiful yeah. piece. I like wearing it. Anyway, there. That's some uh, bead. So you can do around small areas, and it looks good. Yeah. All right. So do you want to show some cabochons next? We got some stuff for you guys. We got some stuff to, to, to show to you show. guys. Um, but this is, we didn't do our usual price thing because uh, some of the bits were too small and they did not have holes to put tags on. I'm going to put this, I'm going to just put my needle like this, go through one side. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that because it'll bend the needle. I'm just going to stick it in there because hmm. this is thick enough. You, you can, can so um, Kinga works on leather. Oh, I didn't even have it in frame. I just stuck it in there. Yeah, so <laughs> you can take this to this level if you practice. I can't do that yet, so I need to practice my bead work. But I love beads, so maybe mm -hmm. I'll get there someday. And then this is on velvet, so the seed, yeah, seed basically right you can do it on any kind of fabric that will hold. This part right here around this yellow gemstone, this orange bit, mm -hmm. this is peyote around, and that's peyote in a round. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I showed that. That looks good. All right. Well, we were going to do some uh, bead things, but we had, so I pulled out so many calves, we were like, this is going to take yeah, so long. So, <clears throat> we're going to try and do this with, um, oh, this is going to be a lot of beads to try. Yeah, this is a lot of stuff. I'm going to try and get this going. I don't want to be able to do this right now with just one hand. Mm -hmm. I usually use, how just pour them into my palm, to be honest. I don't like the palm action. That gets sweaty. Mm. All right. So you can just maybe the silver boxes first. Oh, you want to start with silver? Or we can go just pick a cab and just show it. And okay. That, that thing will tell you what it is, that card. All right. So are we going to write them on this? I don't. Um, we need, we need to, to write I it. I thought we are going to start showing them right now. Because there's nothing on screen right now. Let's just show something. Um, oh, here I am. Okay, so this is the first one. This one's 20. Where's the lock? We need to find something to do the locks. That's what that paper is. Well, we tried to do something different this time, y'all, and it ended up not being as foolproof as we thought it was going to be. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We have cabochons to show you guys. Mom pulled out from her special secret collection. I pulled out from my collection. So I'm going to show you guys. And these have prices on them, but we could not figure out how to get the lot numbers on there in a big enough way. So that so, everybody could see it. So I'm cutting up some index cards, and we're going to see if that works. So I can yeah. show you the lot and the thing. This kind of came down to the wire. Oh, yeah, doing it on stream. I thought we could just tell them what it is with the card that I wrote specifically for this purpose. Oh, <laughs> where's those sapphires? Okay. Yeah, you can say... 
Here, we can even show them the card in my goofy handwriting. Mm. All right, so the, for example, this one, this is Rutilated Quartz for 25 And on my list right here, I put yeah, I know, but you don't want to have to have lot that. 458. Right, I know that's so not let's good. Write it down. So let's put down 458. Oh, yeah. Sorry, How guys. How much is it? 25. That's going to take all night if we do Still, that. Yeah, literally. I, so if you're interested, this is. I got it, actually, without a funnel. Just that. For this one. If you're interested, this is a really pretty rutilated quartz. And it, I originally bought this because I'm going to set them, and I thought it looked cool because it kind of look how it makes things a little bit. It like it has those tiny root tiles, and it shows. I was going to paint something on the back, you know. So that's what this is. If you're interested, this is twenty five dollars. Oh, this one. This is actually a piece I've had this one for many years. This is a piece of chrysoprase. And it's beautiful gem quality. Um, this light makes it look like it is aqua, but it's actually more of a really kind of like an emerald. We can or do no, this. it's like it still looks. It looks aqua. blue, but in it's real life, more it's green. more green. Yeah, we do need it. What is Kinga? Kinga is a friend of ours. So her name what is, is Kinga? Kinga Bledsoe is her name. Look her up on, on Facebook. Don't You'll love nails. her work. All right, we need to write a thing for this one then. Oh, Bonnie says she wants that one. How much is it? It's $38. What is the, the lot number, Azalea? That is that's 460. I need to get my book over there. Okay, go get it. Can we grab it? Actually. Oh. Sorry, y'all. We kind of, uh, we've been well, we've never we done with this. this we didn't, we've before. never done caps. So we're, so we're going to see if we could get it. So this one is 38 if you're interested. It's um, gem quality. So we'll do it like that. And then this is Ruby Zozite. So this is actually... A really cool, it's kind of an unusual stone. It's ruby that's growing in a matrix that is, uh, they call it zozite. That's that green part. And then this is ruby. I have another piece of this here. It's actually a matched pair, but I was going to do them separately because they're kind of big, you know. And I thought that these would look super good in a, in a cast bezel. And so um, I have a couple of these. And that is what, 454. 454, and they are 30 each. So if you're interested, these this are really gone. pretty. You can see more of that on that side. So they have a little bit of, I took them off of, they had, I had them stuck down with double side tape. So if you ever, um, we can actually you zoom have, back out because it doesn't need to be so zoomed in. Sorry, guys. We can, uh, we're bit. gonna zoom out just a little bit so you guys can see it a little better. Yeah, that looks good. All right, there we go. Uh, Kylisha asked, any updates on the fairy bronze pieces? You Those know what? I ones? just went downstairs. Kylisha, and... I shipped your package. Oh, did she have the fairy bronze in there? Because there you... was a, there was three sitting down Kylisha there. Kylisha had the those two little bronze fairies. Oh, small and like maybe a Luna moth. I shipped that. Oh. Good. So uh, that was like two days ago, maybe. I don't know if you got the email. Okay, I can so this it. one is. That's uh, view 460. Which one is that one? That, that one's gone. That one is called Chrysoprase. That's funny about that one. Oh, and Sam Edwards says Bing Bong. I'm not sure why he says Bing Bong. But hey, we're Sam. coming to see him soon, Sam. Coming to see you. Get ready. Get ready yourself to do some crafting with the fam. I'm going to force him to do it for real. Yeah, he likes it. He likes it. I'm going to show you guys. I have some of these. I don't have very many of my two. Or I have two of these great big ones. This is. We can show them briefly before uh -huh. we put the tag out. These, we have two of these enormous sapphire cabochons. All of these that we're showing right now have flat backs, which would be perfect for what I showed earlier with the, with the uh, 
the bead peyote or the cabochon peyote, I mean. Colite says, can you set a cab on leather with leather? Oh, yeah. Listen, I know that technique. I got a friend that sets, she makes knife handles and um, knives and knife knife sheaths, sheaths, what do you call that? Scabbard? I don't know what the word is. But um, she does, she sets them by making, I don't have any leather that's thin enough handy, but she cuts like a window and then sews it down, glues it first and makes like, and sews them onto patches. So you can easily do that. So this is, um, yeah, look at all that sheen on that. These are some of my, yeah, I love that. It has a really beautiful foggy. They look a little gray here, but there's definitely like they have a different bluish quality. So this is pretty much, I think these are my, the most expensive ones we had as far as tonight's collection. Imagine a giant peyote stitched up pendant with that, like right here. I know, chest. look at that. That'd be this. awesome. I know, check that out. That'd be killer. I know. This one will be easy because look, you don't, I mean, you you don't have to do like, yeah, you only have to do like four beads. rows. I think I would do like really small ones and do something that, like maybe even a color shift. Could you imagine if you did ombre all the way around? It'd be amazing. Same with this. Like, if I were to do this one, I would hit that pink that's in there and do a pink one around. Maybe, like, ombre out to, like, a, a I don't gold. even notice the pink that you're talking about. The I pink know. in question is more visible on this one. Mm -hmm. see well, that. I mean, it's like you can see a little hint of it. All right, let's move on. All right, moving on. Moving on, moving on. All right, here's one. Where's the next one? Oh, let's do those silver boxes for a minute. Let's switch to that for a second. Okay, so start begin showing. All right, we've got two of these little silver boxes. They're not pendants. They're not lockets. They're just little, little sterling silver. They're oh, boxes. Jermaine says how much are the sapphires? So those, those are. are Run back, Jermaine. I knew you would like those. I love them myself. They're fifty. She wanted to keep them. Yes. Yeah, I did want to keep them. Sapphires. Look how big they are in my hand. But I really want to get. Little. You know what I want to get, you guys? I would like to get an attic fan for my studio because it's getting difficult to stand it up there. So one of these is gone. Or caffeine. Okay. So these little silver boxes, they're sterling. Oh, we can scoot this out of the way. I have two. And so what I bought this for, I'm going to show you what I bought this for. Jermaine says so she likes the darker one at $4.55. So I have Oh, yeah, you could do the Ruby Zozite with the finishing row and teeny of rubies. Oh, my God, yes. And nowadays, you can get rubies with a nice large hole that you could actually you could actually seed beat it. Oh, I'm showing. I'm not even in the frame. So I bought this with the purpose of making watercolors, a watercolor palette. And I thought that that would be really Frenchy and fancy. Really and Frenchy. So I'm going to – I have a couple more of these. But um, when I fill this up for with watercolor, it's not going to be sixty-eight dollars. It's going to be more like one eighty because I'm going to build a epoxy putty well, or I'm just going to put a divider here and do like a true white and a true black, and then paint this. So this is a pretty nice build on this. I collected these a while ago, and they shine up. They're like I kept them so that they'd stay shiny. So I have two of those. If you guys are interested, perfect little box. It's more, they're four pills, actually. So that's the thing that these are made for. But um, I'm going to use them for watercolor boxes. All right, let's move on. All right. What do you want to show next? I'm looking to look think, at this one right now. Oh, yes. Let's see. We have, so how many of those do we have? Set it out one, there. It's right here. Lot 456. All right, you guys. Uh, last time we showed a rose quartz, it was like real fast. I know it might have been like this, but it was real faceted. Mm. And um, I really like, I, I don't know, rose quartz is considered cheap, but I love it. In some um, instances, it's considered cheap, but I I like how it looks. I love pink. Mm -hmm, this, is a, this is a cab. It's completely flat back, except this part is a little smooth. 
Mm. With this, if you're doing peyote, I would probably, with the size I was doing, size 11 beads, I think I would do maybe six rows, seven rows. It would hug it nicely. Uh -huh. Bonnie says, I want to see how you do the watercolor boxes. Maybe we can release a video about that. Sure, I can do that, but I have some that I've already made. Yeah, you can show that off. Mm -hmm. So that's lot 456 for 25, this rose quartz cap. I can show that actually right We need right to now. actually do measurements. That might be something that people want to see is how big it is if we have a ruler around. Okay, so I have, this is my sketchbook. You guys have seen this before. And this is a locket. This is not a watercolor thing. So I pin it in place with this uh, clip here. And I did this in, I think it was either polymer clay or I think maybe epoxy putty. And I just smoothed a layer in there and I made this little mold and smashed it in to get those divots. And you can get, see, it's like, it's a locket. This is old as the hills. And it works great, you know. I don't need, I don't need a ton of watercolor for a day trip, you know. So uh, this works perfect for me. I have another little palette that I sometimes take if I want to do some mixing, but mostly I just uh, mix right on this little spot. And it's enough to, you know, do a little bit of this and that, you know. It's good times. So that's what that's for. But mine, I want to do a silver one for myself, but that one's just plain brass. Oh, it looks like Carrie or Rossi would like that one to try out, Azalea. Sure, I, I already wrote her down. So this oh. is the size. This is that's this is on inches. That's about an inch and a quarter, I would say, in length. Oh, Bonnie says I will take one of the boxes, please. Oh, wonderful. That's that's lot four fifty two for Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, I think you'll like it. If you want, I'll show. I'll do a tutorial really soon of how to make a watercolor locket. And I have a bunch of lockets that I can do. All right, next one. I really, I kind of uh, hesitated to not put this in my pocket. Oh, yeah. This is a turquoise heart. And you all know how much I love little heart-shaped things and pink things and whatever else. And this is a little heart-shaped turquoise cab. And it has a little hint of all sorts of little colors in there. Like it's not just a green and brown, but it's got like a little bit of orange. So that comes from pale. Battle Mountain. I don't remember whereabouts that is located, but a friend of mine carved that cab, probably 15. Actually, that was I did that when I was living in Columbus. So that's before you you're 18. Yeah, yeah. that's before you were born. So this so a friend of mine when I was in the in the uh, back in the day at the Cultural Arts Center taking jewelry classes. All right, lot 457 has been claimed. That one was fast. That was like yeah, the fastest yeah. one yet. Everybody well, wanted that, a really good one. that cute little heart. Oh, here's a, this is going to, I don't know how fast this is going to go, but this is a, a little unikite piece. Let me see. That is uh, 10. Oh, I like this one too. I know. They call that uh so I I call it I think it's unikite, but somebody else said it looked more like picture picture jasper. But um, it's a pretty cool piece. Uh, Bob Burkett and I went through a phase a few years ago where we collected a bunch of those and we were setting them in pendants. It was fun. A lot of fun. That's lot four fifty nine. That one's gonna go fast. That one's only ten dollars. And How I wanted to keep that one? for myself. This one's on the back. Oh, well, let's go let's keep that. Let's start to keep the stuff on the front, finish up that. All right, this, let's look at that measurement. Since this is square, I'm going to turn it. So this is about three quarters of an inch in length. And then in width, it's about the same. So it's pretty, uh, it's like a little trapezoid because it's not a perfect square. 459 to Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Mm. All right, so I have this. I was going to do these at five a piece. So... Um, instead, we were just going to do that in one big lot, so I didn't have to mess around with it. But um, this is 461. You want to do them at five? We'll just do it that way. So these are five dollars a piece. If you want them all, we'll just you know, that's it for that. 
we were uh, originally going to do one at a time, and then yeah. we changed our minds to do like a whole big, you buy them in the set for, for 30 instead of doing it individually. But now we can just do it however y'all want. If y'all start picking it one at a time, then y'all can have it one at a time. But if somebody says, I want all six of them just for me. They're then, $5 each. Yeah. These, what are these? Labradorite carved like leaves. leaves. So this one, I think this one's my favorite. This one's nice. No, 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 no. This one's my favorite. So this they're not amazingly shade. carved, but they're pretty nice. And for five bucks, you know. These are also flat back. I put those, you know what I was doing with those? I had glued those in a, um, like, I didn't beat around them. And it was my, like, I was going to. But instead, I just put them in leather. So that these are the about remainder. Half inch wide. Mm -hmm. uh, almost about three quarter inch. So you, let's just do it in a lot. Price. How much is that? So for the one in? lot, that is. Let's just do thirty. So anyone want those? It's thirty dollars for the whole for the whole set of these six of them here. Put them on there so you can see them. Because it yeah. kind of blends in. Oh, that. they do kind of blend it on the gray. Yeah, they have a pretty good. Like they have a pretty good. That one is nice. That one kind of All of them have a good out. flash. Yeah, and they're carved on both sides. So if you wanted to, um, you could use a stitch that incorporated like a small bead, I would say. And if you made it into an earring or something, you could just easily do a, a stitch and then have it like, you know, you could hug it around the edge. Or even, you know, I made some. Have you guys ever done that soldering where you use tin solder? And you just go around with copper tape. We did a thing, a project at Bead and Button one year, and with lenses. And I did a more you could do pendants and wire. So that's um, you know, back in the day. Vicky says they would look nice on a necklace, all of them together. I agree, Vicky. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think if you did um, if you did peyote stitch around each one, where you kind of you set them in a piece, to make them into basically little pendants, then you could put all of them. On like one big green beaded necklace or something make it like a tree that'd be cool or a brown one like a coppery one you can hang these all like that that'd be sick mm. i love it we're gonna tape these down so that they don't rattle around in the in the uh, package i nothing rattles around in any package i ship mm. i wrap it up good all right okay red sapphires where oh it's these is that that Oh, uh, yeah, these are the brown ones here. Oh, that's brown. Okay, we've got more sapphires. You guys are going to be delighted with these because I am. Yeah, Zoe wanted to keep those. We have two of these. This is the uh, the red sapphire. Mom's writing the, the card for them right now. If I can get the sticky off my... That's from the double-sided sticky tape. I put sticky tape on them so that I put the They're price. Matching. Whenever I get... This is a tip for y'all. If you ever get cabs like this, tape them down. Use double-sided tape. And tape them to it with the price, so you know. Oh, I didn't put the price. Hand it back. I need to get the price. That's she the down. weight. That's how much it weighs. Mm. Yeah, that's an excellent price. Yeah, by the way. Sapphires. That's crazy. Well, oh, Clem says Azalea wraps everything so beautifully. Thank you. Yeah, I I'm don't know if you best. can see this, but they have, this is, the light is not showing us that it's full glory, but um, that's what we need to invest in, or some glorious lights. lights yeah, something real. that doesn't bleach the colors out. Mm -hmm. So this one is gone. Yeah, one, oh no, both are gone. Oh, oh, oh Sandra and Sharon. Oh, Jermaine. She was about to claim both of them. I'm mm. sorry, Jermaine. So these are that's coming. Crazy. Is that the bronze ones, Azalea? Um, so. oh, no, 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 that's not the brown that one. ones. I wrote them as brown. Okay, Just that's to be brown simple. sapphires. These are a little more. All right. Thank you guys for bearing with us. We're writing everything. So these have these are people. called party sapphires because they have a little bit of blue, and they call it party because it's um double, and they have a bronzy kind of look to them. You can see. Get in there with the uh, what you call it. Let's get and see in there and camo that. Oh, camo, you gotta, yeah, there you go. I'm gonna go and zoom in a little more because I'm gonna get in there and show. Okay, I'm in the shadow. Okay, there we go. 
They look very dark on screen. They look dark. You know what we really, can do? There's all of this over here that we oh, can probably mess with. Let's see if we can make that brightness go. Up. Oh, oh this too bright. Like the same thing. Uh, uh. <laughs> so a friend of mine was photographing them where she was showing it like this, taking the light and saying and going under it. So that, that shows looks good. some of the color of it. Can't really see it in this light, but it's that. That's the more accurate representation of the color. So they're kind of here in this light. It looks dark, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's see. smart to put your phone camera, uh, your phone flashlight underneath it like that. You can always do this and show, you mm. can show how those different color shifts, because there's a little bit of blue right there. And yeah, that's like why orange. they call it a party sapphire, because it has, um, oh, Felipe says zoom, zoom in. Let's see if that works. That might be too much zoom. But, yeah. That still looks pretty epic right now. Yeah, it looks pretty good, but it doesn't really show it, like, in real life. It's kind of dark in here, so. This yeah. one has more blue. Yeah. Mm. All right. All right. Moving on. Moving on. We have to zoom back out a little bit, though, because this is too much. Too much. That's the good about that zoom. I know Mom's so delighted. I'm so delighted. We've been playing our Seek and Find games that we paid for in 2013, and we were mm -hmm. delighted to play them for like two hours yeah, last night. It was good times. That's, oh, this is that's the nostalgic era for me and my mom playing, <sighs> yes. playing seek and find mystery games on the touchscreen computer. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Lenovo. <laughs> no, it was an HP. It was a Lenovo when we were playing. Mm. I had a day. Lenovo. Yeah, might, oh, yeah, Teresa says so. so she'd like a, the darker one. All right, Write done and done. Down. So this show is showing up like it's black, but it's actually blue. That's a blue. Let me see if I can. Hit that with the light again and show it a little bit better. Let's go on top of it. Oh, that's scrumptious. Which yeah. one is that? That's the dark blue one. It's dark blue, but it shows up in different lights as a denim. This light looks, you know, it looks dark, but it's actually a really nice colored stone. Let's see if I can show it this way. Oh, Kathleen is going with 461. Thank you, Kathleen. Yeah, that shows it a little better. You know, you can see it has more of the personality of the stone. Anyway, I love this one. I set the other one. Of course. Mm -hmm. That looked good, and I sold that right away. Is that a sapphire? It is a sapphire. That's a that's So epic. it has a, a hard sparkle. So this, I did not mark I these up. Forehead. I just, because I got a really fantastic price, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I bought those. So I bought the whole thing. So I bought the bag. So I'm giving you guys passing that, that deal down. Anyway, that looks good on that one. The other one long ago sold, if I remember correctly. I had, I think this set came in a thing of like four of the similar cut. All right. That one is gone. Kim, I forgot y'all were going live tonight. Oh. Hello, we don't usually go live on, on this Wednesdays. This is a different night for us. This is, oh, um, we've got two of those. Oh, that these is are the green. green. The green drops. 466. Perfect. All right, you guys, you ready for the next one? I love these because y'all know how much I love green. My shirt is is green silk. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get some of that light to get glance off of them. So this is kind of almost reminds me Here, of labradorite colors. Oh, you can, you can I aim like it down doing it like dog. this. Because it really shows... Well, that's not really accurate of the color. You're not going to have light streaming through it, you know. That's just the carrot weight on the back. Well, mm -hmm. I just in real life, you can see the color. And on screen, it looks white, which is mm -hmm. really frustrating <laughs> that you can't get that color right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll kind of like hold it like this. Those would make it. epic earrings, too, because they're a pair. Oh, look. This is part of that collection. I, I had been saving them for like... I don't even know how long. And my friend said that. I sent that to her, and she said it for me. Isn't that pretty? Well, this white is under it, and it kind of shows it's dark. Lighting. It's just the lighting in here is not fantastic. But when I hold it up, it kind of shows off more of the more accurate color. Oh, Marianne has a question. Marianne uh, asks, how do I pay 
Well, um, after the live, either tonight, t tomorrow, or maybe, uh, you know, the next day, I don't know. I'm not used to uh, Wednesday lives. Um, I will send you an invoice. Now, if you don't have, if you've never shopped with us before, there's a chance that I will not have your email and your payment information on file. So you can send me a message on Facebook or send me an email or send us an email with the, 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 the email at the top of the screen that should be working. So you can send an email and say, hey, I requested oh, this. If you send it to me, then it's not going to, nobody's going to ever see it again. Well, you need to be able to check your email because that's what's on the, the border. Oh, sorry. See that? Google Sometimes Studios at Yahoo, awesome that's mom's, or you can find the contact on the website. There's a contact oh, on the website. Yeah, these would be. All right, Jermaine. You got it. Now this, I had a lot of trouble photographing these. So I bought these a long time ago. These are from Indonesia. This is called. Um, All right, Marianne, hold on just a, just a this second. Is, I gotta answer this question. Uh, she says I have shopped with you. Okay, then I should have your stuff on file, and you should receive an invoice in your email. No, you don't. Now continue. All right. So this is called iris agate. Now I don't know if you can see this, but iris agate is a pretty rare stone. It usually comes from Indonesia. And they call it that because they have this band of fluorescent rainbow. Really took a sunset on the video because the top kind of has a little orange. Mm -hmm. hue. So here's the other one. Let's see if you can see it. What if Let's we put see. a very thin sheet of paper over the light when we showed it? Because mm -hmm. then it would it disperse it. As, yeah, no, it wouldn't be as bright. So you can't really even see it, but um, maybe if I moved up a page piece like oh, higher to the camera yeah, so these have good. a band in the sun when you hold them up of iridescence but when you take that away they look like this so it's like an agate but it has a band of rainbow in there that's what they call it Rain they call it iris agate that's what those are i have three we didn't put a plot number for that one Oh, well, let me do it now. What's the last one? Um, that would be 473. All right, I'll get a card here. Now, I set a bunch of these in silver and made settings for them. And I have three of them. They're $20 That's each. 473 for each of these. Yeah, Irish Shiny, agate. So I tried to get, sometimes they don't, one of the annoying things about getting hand cut gemstones is that they're not, uh, what you call it, standard sometimes. And so they're all a little bit different and they're cut to maximize the color of, uh, you know. Oh, Helene, she's going to claim all three. All right. Well, I would. I know, I right? Would. I mean, I have a, like 10 more of them, but those. I can't put them just yet. Hmm. All right, those are gone. Oh, there it is. That's the word I'm looking for, calibrated. Thank you, Sheree. See how our stuff, we're shoving it off to the side, and we should be putting it back in the tray. We'll do stuff. it. We'll do it. So this one is a brown that's or called a bronze sapphire when it's this dark. It's on this side. And yeah, it is. This one at the bottom, about okay. 463. I like this one, too. This one is mostly opaque, so the light doesn't really do it. The light underneath it doesn't really do anything. That's just the shimmer, the natural shine from the top of this sapphire. Yeah. A light box. I have a light box somewhere. It just makes it darker. Oh, right. It makes it darker. We put a light behind it, and it gives it kind of a weird... It's only okay. We're still figuring everything out. I think it's just our lighting situation is a little goofy. Hmm. Oh, that's nice of Helene. Yeah, I only have the one. I set all the other ones. That's like this. That's part of the same lot. When I bought this collection, I probably bought three or four hundred stones over that. And I, I had to buy the whole thing to get the deal. But they were all a little bit different. And some of them were in a similar cut. And we tried to match them. So I tried to match a lot of them. Because at first I thought I was going to make earrings. But, um, you know, I didn't. So... Right, now that's right good. Here. So I bought these. That's an actual, if you want to go to a gem show now, this would not be that price. Just no. so you know. 
that's actually real. Like all these sapphires, you guys, I'm giving you guys just above the, what I paid for them. So that's, yeah. you're not, if you go to the gem show expecting that price, you're not People tell it. you that though at the gem show. They're like, oh, this is very, very close to my cost. Uh, but in this case, it's it for real. <laughs> that's <laughs> the truth. All right. So this, I only have one of these. This is a Feldspar. Oh, I like that. Is, I would not price this one earlier. I didn't look at this. Oh, you didn't? I'll price it right now. I'll show it up close. Don't look at my nails. Just keep your eyes on the prize, y'all. <laughs> so Feldspar is a type of, it looks like, so it's like moonstone, sunstone, and you get this, a lot of times it's layered, right? It layers in a stack, and that's, and I believe some far, like Labyrinth has it, so the, the, the uh, stone was made and the crystalline form was stacked. And if you look at it, let me see if I can get that light to shine on that to show that. Sometimes they have a scattered rainbow yeah. look. Okay, let's see if I can get that to show up. We'll get in there close. Hey, zoom in with that that that, that that digital zoom. That digital zoom. Maybe it'll go in tight and show that. Oh yeah, you can see it. So it has that sheen, just like sunstone or moonstone or labradorite. Do you ever get Oregon blue opal? I have several pieces of Oregon blue opal. She got everything opal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's opal, I probably got it in my collection. This is, did we say the lot number? Because this oh, is lot 474 for this feldspar. Mm -hmm. You probably can't even find this anymore. I bought this and I bought all I could get. And this is one Andrew and I made that series called the... Uh, they were looked like uh what did we call that i made a great big spear shape and we set them in the center and they look so delightful yeah this Sharon, is a good one it has a lot of movement I, and play so you I don't guys have are, you guys are really going back and forth about <laughs> these bits but i already wrote down that helene gets one that uh sharon brown Bowers gets one, and that uh, Ellen Gradman gets one. So you guys right. are splitting them in the threes. Right. And she offered it, and I took that note. So Sharon, you'll get one anyway. Mm -hmm. You say no worries, but yeah, you can you get one. one. Yeah, that's a great price. So yeah. that's four seventy four. If you're interested. All right, next. Let's see what we have. We don't have very. There's not a lot left. Did we get all the gem? I think we got all the gemstones. Did we get this? Okay, so I'm start oh, showing. you can write that tag on there. All right, right. y'all ready for this? I wanted to keep this because y'all know how much I love silver. This is a sterling silver locket, and I think it is so charming and Victorian. Look, you can see my face in it. <laughs> nice. I know. So this opens up like this. It's a nice deep, I don't know what you put in there, but it's a big old bowl, and I like this a lot. Mm. Uh, it's got a nice weight to it, sterling silver. It's a good build. It's we have that build. at 42 at lot 474. Mm, yeah, it's a nice piece. It's vintage. Oh, and it has a nice, look at the thickness. Yes, I do have, I actually have, sometime I should show you my private collection. The but, private collection. But then everybody would <laughs> be like, okay, I bid on that one. You're like, uh. Well, then I'm embarrassed because then it's like how much I them. paid for it. People would be like, you did what now? How yeah, much you pay so on that? crazy. I said the same thing to you, too. Mm -hmm. I have a necklace. My friend, um, oh, my. Mm -hmm. I would put teeth in there. Yeah. So I can rattle around. Yeah, there's a, funny. there's definitely, here's the opening. There's potential. <laughs> it's, it's very open in there. Mm -hmm. You can put a lot of things in that. Little. And it has that lip, so it's not going to fall out. It's pretty secure, too. Like, it's not sliding around. It's not loose. Not loose at all. So there it is. Sure, you're interested. I'd love to see your private collection. That sometime, sometime I'll do it. So if you're interested, replay. If you message me, I don't know. I'll try to forward it to Zelly. But sometimes my, if you guys saw my email, it's it gets, crazy. there's so many of them. And if I don't do it one day, it's like it stacks up on top of me. Uh, you grab just the yeah. You can grab both of those. That one has the tag. All right. On it. Oh, so we have two of these. Those have extra shine on them. Those are like golden. Julie says a nice bud. Yep, that would perfectly fit. Just enough 
for and you know you want to put a little something something in there perfect done and done Definitely. all right so it is for our family family it's all it's all good so this we just finished this up you guys remember that necklace i made did, we, did you already ship them as that necklace uh that yeah what necklaces you sold i shipped oh, does it did this one sell with that great big bird I can't remember. oh well anyway i made a necklace that um featured this bead or pendant, pendant rather so this is lot 468 it's a big old heavy those are not available on our website right now those are mm -hmm. big bronze raven pendants and people those are usually very um those mm -hmm. well those were popular until we sold out <clears> my, <throat> my studio stock and i guess dad made some more for us yeah we um i tend Show to make back. this this is how it hangs by the way oh that's how it hangs because people ask every time they're like how does it hang there's a bell on the back of your neck mm. it hangs well it does it hangs perfectly balanced it's a very balanced piece it doesn't like lean mm -hmm. hangs yeah thankfully right. i i didn't have any leaning action but um all the necklaces i've made with that have have sold i think the one has sold but um it has a kind of an amulet quality to it so it, it's a real showstopper I call this a showstopper. We do have them in pewter if you're interested, and those, I believe, are on the website. So if you want a bronze one, I mean, in silver, that would be a fortune. But in bronze, it's Yeah, in silver, that would be like 70 to 80, probably. Maybe. All right. Let me put that back in. I have one of these. We have one. So you guys uh, get yourselves ready. We're going to show the tag. This is a sterling silver Luna moth. We had these uh, a few months ago, and just recently we did that pre-sale on the bronze ones, and those should have all shipped probably mm -hmm. two days ago. I, I put those out. It's a sterling silver Luna moth. That is lot 467 for $54. And these usually go like that because they are so scrumptious and decadent in that silver and you can string it either direction if you want to be more so if you put your necklace on and you're feeling more demure you could be like this teresa or you can show her glory that was fast mm -hmm. i didn't think that would last that long they never do all right so i have several of these i asked greg to make me a bunch because i finished my necklaces with these so they look Lately, really good. All the those. necklaces I made with this, especially with those eight millimeter beads, they look so good and they sold really fast. I was really happy. We that did they a found homes. on uh, these a few weeks ago or a few we months did. ago. We did. Yeah, we don't I, have this any is of those left. no, this is. I asked Greg to make these. That's what this is from because I was making necklaces because, in California. You see how good those look in bronze? Yeah, like the necklace. Bonnie one. How many do we have sitting over there? Are we doing a pre sale? No, it's not pre sale. It's just that we have, let's see. We have four total. All right, we've got four of them. One is gone to Bonnie. Yeah, this is, I feel like, the best side. Let me see. Oh, here's our necklace. It hasn't shipped yet. The, oh, yeah, that was the big bronze raven. Mm hmm. Yeah, imagine if that was the case on that one. I'm thinking about cookies right now, to be honest. That's some cookies. That's this how that kind of has a cookie vibe. Yeah, this is all good. All right, anyway, that, that's that clasp. Here's the other ones. It's so like 472. We've got, I think, uh, three left. Three left. I love this. Look how good those are. Scrumptious. It's my favorite side. So if it does flip, you have both sides of the moon. I tried to get it as accurate as possible, but, you know. Oh, Marianne. She said she made a necklace with the bronze moth 10 years ago. It's one of my favorites. I think so. I like that piece. I made that a long time ago, and I really like it. I've been in a clasp fever. Two so. are gone. One there's, to Sharon and one to Bonnie. There's two left. There's if two anyone, left. So, yeah. Replay. Yeah, if you're on replay, you can uh, message or, you know. What, two things left or so? No, we have a couple things Three, left. Three, four, maybe. All right, we're almost done, you guys. Oh, so I think we only have one of this. This is twenty-four dollars. It's four seventy-three. And I asked Greg to make me a couple of those, and I wanted to pair them with some 
of these other beads I had sitting around. Let me see if I can find them. I, they're like kyanite or something. I don't see them handy. But this is a Shibu. Shibu Ichi. You see that color? That bronzy color? All right, I got to take notes now. Okay. And I have one of this. This is one of my all-time favorites, all-time favorites that I made. And it says one of my favorite, part of one of my favorite poems. It says, the mind has a thousand eyes and the heart but one. Wow. So I did this. I have a necklace that I wear. It's like my amulet necklace, one of my amulet necklaces. And I put teardrop-shaped labradorites and sapphires from that. Let's... I have some over here from before, from the kit that just we just dropped last week or two days ago or whenever that was. And this is what I did with mine. I put them on chains with fine paper clip chain. Oh yeah, the drops like like a storm. Mm -hmm. It's I like, like it's like raining. Crying. Mm -hmm. It's raining. Yeah. I love that story. I want that for myself. Mm-hmm. Oh, Kimberly says, the quotes you choose are so awesome. Amazing how connected I am. Many are to them. Yeah, I think that's part of it. You know, I think it is definitely part of it. Oh, it looks like. I already took my notes. Oh, you, know? you got that already? I'm fast. You are fast. I imagine. Oh, what if it was a big one? Is that too much? Is it too much? It's too, too weird. As always, it's too much. The little blue ones are very charming. Mm -hmm. It is charming with the littler ones. All right. I think there's only two pieces left. This, we did not get these to come out before. We only had like three of them that came out. This is sterling. And um, there's only one. 470, you guys. 470. She's got a little bit of dark here, but that's just uh, the, um, what you call it, buffing compound. That's easily removed. But I tried to do it, detail it. Silver, Marianne. I think that one already sold. Let me see. It, it does it look like who got that one? It looks like Ellen. Ellen was first on that. And I only have the one. Um, I, I already I already took my notes. The people that came in that came in first. Do you want me to do pre-sale? Um, I don't know. Let's just we'll what we'll do is um you know, we could say we could message. If you guys want to do pre-sale, let us know. Message us, and then we can we can talk about it further. Oh, yeah, sometimes you can it's, like, it's like it's like you know, it depends on our workload. You know, like if we're not because a casting is kind of a production, and we do it like two times a week sometimes. And if we can get in there and uh, finish it up, then um, you know, it works out. So this has a. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but it has a little part oh. where her hand can hold. There's a hole here and there's a hole here. So I designed this so that. Oh, Shuri, how can I bring up the shiny silver highlights on your pewter pieces? Oh, I'll show you right now. I got a, I got a polishing pad somewhere over here. Pro polishing pads. Isn't that one sitting right there? Hold up. I can. Oh. Um, I'm I want to find a, I want to find a dark pewter so it really shows you. While we're waiting for her to grab that, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can make the font on our new computer a little bigger because I'm a little hard of seeing. Oh. Okay. I hope that didn't mess anything up because it just took me to a different thing. Uh, uh, uh. This is just some zoom action. There we go. It's a little bigger now, Mom, so you can read them comments a little easier. Oh, thank you. I think I could go again, but it oh, might I think be a Carrie just bigger. got that big mermaid. Let me show you on this. All right, so she's got that little piece of dark right on her cheek, and this is a pro polishing pad. It uh, has some kind of like I don't know what's what's in there, but um, let me see. They were asking about the pewter shining up. Oh, let's see. Where did that pewter piece go? Oh, here's one. So there's a pewter piece. It's all dark, and she's using a pro polishing pad, or maybe you could either use like a toothbrush or a paper towel. And yeah, basically, what causes the darkness is when you're handling it, the oils of your hands, because uh, pewter is essentially tin 
silver and copper. And we don't put anything in it to make us crazy because we, we make this in our, in our garage, otherwise known as the studio. And so we're not going to use anything like nickel or zinc in there. So any of the darkness is, is a patina that we put on it. And if it has too much, you can always use a toothbrush, but this takes it off fast. Yeah, pro polishing pads are the way to go. Mm, you see that? I mean, it, it was so fast, it's like it was done. You can show it on the silver, too. Yeah, this one goes. buffing compound, I'm going to have to get after it with a little piece because it's like, um, yeah, there it is. It's a little, the buffing compound was uh, resisting. Look, there it is. That's her cheek. So buffing compound is like this, uh, it's like waxy. And sometimes you can get a little bit in, in the crevices and you can just easily remove it with a toothbrush. I'll, I usually go over them before I ship them out because I'm kind of, uh, I don't know what's the word for it. But I'm going to go over this one to get any buffing compound off. And so the last thing of the evening, I only have one. Oh, I have some of those Mr. Clean foams. Let's check it and see if that would work. She's oh, gonna, the, I'm going to do an experiment. Gonna see right now. She's going to get one of them them things that you're talking about to see if that's going to shine it up. This is, uh, we had some of these on our website. Let's scoot down there. This is the, uh, the bronze heart lock pendant. We had these on the website, but they sold out, and now we have a, a new batch, and this is very shiny, very golden. I love it when we make our um, when we make our bronze, and it's like perfectly like golden, glittery, shiny. It's like um, I can't remember what it makes me think of, but it kind of reminds me of like Lord of the Rings or like Hobbit dwarves a little bit, you know? This is kind of gross. They're little, uh, they're golden, everything except this is not. You know, it's not actual gold, but I love it. Oh, she's coming back. She's getting them that sponge. Yeah, it's nasty. This is lot 469. Now, I bet this would be better if it were dry, but um, I'm going to find a pewter bead that is... Oh, Shari says, I know you can take off watercolor oops with Mr. Clean sponges. Max you is being water like watercolor like mistakes. Oh, I didn't know that. Max is, a, is quite the advocate for Mr. Clean sponges. He wants to use those for everything. Yeah, but then he wants to toss it like after using it once. And I was like, that is too expensive. You need to use it till it's falling apart. <laughs> what are you <laughs> looking for? I'm looking for a pewter bead that's like kind of that's like there you there's a good chance it. you won't find a good one. Oh. Let's finish it's this Okay, up. it's getting real real. real. Oh, oh I see something. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's see if getting on. This one's kind of uh has a lot of dark on it. That's that new one. This now this pro polishing pad is not new. Let's see how it works. The Mr. Clean sponge. Hey, I think that does. Oh, well, there you go. We tried one time we did uh, remember we did that one live where we tried all different kinds of cleaning things and it was kind of fun to it was fun, like uh, two and a half hours. It was long because everybody was like, here, try this. And we tried like every cleaning supply I had. <laughs> There was quite a few. So actually, yes, this is a, a wet one, but apparently it takes off all that. Uh, okay, so write that down as uh, one Clean of the things that will take it. it. Yeah, that does it. It will clean it. See that? It totally took off some of that. Because we put a uh, patina on anything, and that will do, take care of it. That looked good. Yay. Yet another thing that worked. That's good. You mean switch up the camera now? Um, oh, Sharon yeah. asks, should it be wet or dry? She just did that with a wet Mr. Wet Clean right sponge. I'm going to switch us back. Y'all are going to see my arm for a second. I'm going to switch us back to our computer camera. I love how good that works. That worked great. It's a delight. It so great. The computer is a delight on for real. All right. Car Did you see what Carrie says? Can I put my name down for a fairy? I can't remember. Pre order. Which fairy is she talking about? We have her down. Oh, you mean this? Do you mean this one? The Luna Moth? You can show it up like this. Is this the one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if you want this for pre order, you guys can message me because sometimes doing a pre order, like a mass pre order, kind of that makes it take a long time. 
But if I've got like two people saying, oh, I want that, then we can just add that to the list and it's easy. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, so she does want that. Hey, so right send me a message, Carrie. Send me a message if you want that. That's just the silver Luna moth. Perfect. All right. How are we looking? We're at the one and a half hour mark. Rule 71. Perfect. What was that one? What are you talking about? The pendant 471 cell. Pendant 471, I believe, was that iCloud. Yeah, we might have to do a um, another batch. Every time I sell this one, every time I get this <laughs> one, it sells. So maybe that's a hint to me to make more. All right, let's start tidying this. We'll tidy All this right. up afterwards. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us this evening. It was a lot of fun. We had a good time. I don't know if you guys had a good time. If you did, maybe give us a thumbs up or let us know that we're doing the right thing. And um, <laughs> let us know we're doing the right thing. We're well, switching you know, our positions. We switched because as I was, uh, I was you know, doing my demo of this. Doing the demo. So if you guys are watching the replay and you have any questions about something, just message us about it. This is what we did today. This was our demo. It was a peyote bead stitching around um, on a piece of interfacing. And we sold cabochon. And you yeah, guys liked our cabochon. It was, it was cabochon. We've never done that before. It was but, different for uh, us. We never did it before. Mom's we solution with the cards is good. The card action, that worked. Yeah, it so. worked out. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape. If you guys get it and you don't like my handwriting, which is understandable, write it down. Put on the cat on a piece of paper. Double stick it down. Sometimes these little calves, like, I long ago lost the prices on, on some of them that I had from back in my uh, youth time when I was first starting to collect cabochons. I was probably Azalea's age, and um, my collection is pretty big, so I went in and took out some that I, that I could, you know, I could part with, you know, but I do have a lot. I still have a lot, but... If you guys are into it, I could get, um, I could dig around and find some more of all different kinds of stones. So if there's something particular that you're looking for, I might have it. You never know. I don't have uh, blue organ opal that I that I have in a cab that I want to share. I have it in a pendant that my friend Derek made. You guys remember Derek from, uh, you know, back in the day with Leah, Leah Fairbanks' husband. You guys remember when he used to do those bead and button had all those awesome opals that's from oregon they have a big plot they they dig up those opals v says yes more cabochons i missed today's boulder opal i'm going to show something that i took out and as i said i had to wait on i don't know if you guys would be into this but i bought this from marilyn burke way back in the day look at this business let's boulder just uh opal. let's just switch it back and show it real real quick oh okay Things still linked. Isn't that cool? Sorry, I guys. have two of them at Bol of Boulder Road. I Open. bumped it super hard. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. Mom wanted to put them out tonight, but since we couldn't figure out, you know, like pricing and whatnot, we just set them aside because they're so massive. They're those opals, and we were figuring we would have to we would have to charge quite a bit for them, and we didn't know if we should show them tonight. Yeah, I don't know if them if anyone would be into them because they're pretty big, they're heavy. I bought these ages ago at one of my very first successful shows. I had like I. I don't know if you remember Marilyn, but she was had a lot. She passed away a few years ago. But um, she was my biggest order up to that time. I was probably 20, 20. And she said, she looked at my work. She was like, she had a big beach store in uh, Seattle. And she said, I'll take uh, 50 of each. And I said, did you say 15? She goes, 50. And I said, 15. And we went back and forth like three times because I could not believe that she would pick out 50 of one design. And it was my biggest wholesale order basically helped launch my company back in whenever that was a long time ago 96 and so to celebrate i bought these two big opals and um i just kept them i never did Sorry, anything with them. so anyway that's my boulder opal that i have right there i was going to put them out and then i have this maybe maybe on uh, sunday so this is actually fossilized that's a seashell you didn't believe that Isn't that crazy amazing Love it. So anyway, that's um, that might be stuff for Sunday. So if you guys are with us on Sunday, we have some plans. We've got some 
I have a bunch of uh, stones. I didn't get to price in them. I got. I think I bit off more than I could chew with all the uh, cabs, but we did have some strands going, and that's on for Sunday night, if you guys want to tune in then. And the uh, tutorial will be leather working, and I'm going to show you guys leather carving. So if you want to see how that's done on vegetable tan leather, that's my, that's my old thing I used to do. I mean, it involves drawing, so, you know, drawing is fun. And uh, that'll be our, uh, you know, that'll be what we're going to do. We're going to do some of that. Might make a hair braid. I don't know. I'll uh, draw something. Maybe I'll make a cuff. It'll be a mystery. It's a mystery. I know, it's a mystery I know now. It'll be a mystery an hour do. before the live, too. Well, I know basically what I'm going to do. I have all the tools. I have to get everything out. But I don't know exactly what I'm going to show. Because, you know, maybe I'm going to show how to make um, I, know gonna, I know I'm going to carve some leather. So if you want to see how that's done, see us Sunday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time, 4 o'clock Pacific time. So... And we'll have our day, our giveaway. We didn't get our, our act together so that we would have that done. But Sunday we'll have. We'll have to know. just start prepping earlier. Well, we usually prep earlier. Oh, so. Vicky likes my hat. Thanks. I put a piece of red silk wrapped around the band and on my crow feathers. It looks good. Azalea. Azalea. Oh, are you great at identifying stones? Inherited so big, unusual stones, maybe three. I am pretty good at it. I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big rock hound. You know, I love stone. Well, we did, we did spend many an afternoon digging around over in Franklin, you know, where they have a lot of those, uh, you know, gem mines. And we went to one that was an emerald mine. I didn't find any emeralds. I found kyanite and garnet and, um, and quartz. I mean, Asheville is like basically sitting on a big, great big quartz crystal. So, you know. Anyhow, oh, Clem likes your hat. Thank you. You can send it to me and I can see what, you know, I can try. I'm, I am not a geologist, but um, I have collected and I know a lot of people. And I actually know a geologist. So if anything, I could forward it and find out for you. So anyhow, thank you guys for sticking with us for, it looks like an hour and 40 minutes. Wow, we went on for a lot longer than usual. Polite says, will you have large hole beads? I might. I have some. Uh, sometimes it depends. A lot of the beads I pick, I don't like the miniature holes. They drive me to, to distraction. But um, we'll see. Usually I try to get, I have pearls with big holes. But um, I'll I love check the collection pearls. and see what's what. So we should have something fun for you guys this Sunday. And... Of course, you know, I'm thinking we're going to do bronze coins, and I have a bunch. So, all right. Oh, oh Clem, Clem, this is my therapy. That's Same. charming. I like Thank you. collecting stones, and oh, he meant, or he meant this. <laughs> uh, all right. Maybe all right. this, as in live. I don't know, but. Thank you, Clem. That Same. means a lot. It means a lot. Helene, thank you. All right. Well, you guys, Sunday night, we will see you. And, oh, don't forget, uh, Friday we have a big thing with Sam Siegel. If you guys are front, if you know Sam's beads, he's a, that's Friday. Is, it's Friday at 6. Okay. Eastern time. So don't forget if you're into it, you know. We're going to be doing the bunny with the big moon, that square pendant. We, mm -hmm. we sent a bunch to Sam. And uh, we're going to show how we're going to use it. So it's going to be like a dance-off, but with beads. A dance-off, but with beads. That's so crazy. <laughs> That's going to be the official title of that episode. I know. A dance-off, but, but with, with beads. beads. So I have a fun, I'm going to tell that to Sam. And I'm going to tell you guys a, 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 a an, an embarrassing dance-off story for you. This, you know, I'm a, I was around tell the 90s. Now. I'm going to tell that now. Wait till the I'll wait till dance -off Friday. Day. So I can share that dance-off story with you. So that should keep you guys intrigued. I've never been a victim of a dance-off. Well, okay. So uh, thank and, you guys for be, showing up. I am ever grateful that it was before cell phones. <laughs> so crazy. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for showing up. We'll see you on Friday and on Sunday. All right. Love you all. Good, good night. We're here. Bye. <laughs>